We are back. And before we get into the actual covenants, to get every single one individually and talk about it, we bring in a lot of scripture. We want to attack one more thing that the devil put on the body of Christ, and the body of Christ thinks it's legit and it's true, and it's actually a deception. Uh, we, we touched it a little bit, a little bit before, <clears throat> and that's poverty. Poverty is absolutely a curse. It has nothing to do with the blessing of the Lord and is not used by the Lord to train us. Poverty has nothing to do with the Lord. The Lord died to destroy the curse, and poverty is a curse. Now, think about this. Consider this. You go, you go, at, you go at your workplace, and you are a son of God, and you believe in the Lord and in the Father, and the Father is the... He created everything by just speaking. And you are there at being a Christian. And the guy next to you, he's a non-Christian. He doesn't believe in anything. He doesn't even care for your father, for your God. People looking at you, you, you strive. You, you, you don't have enough money to pay your rent. That guy doesn't have enough money to pay his rent. There's no difference between you two. I was working in many years before. We're going to get into a lot of situations and, and explain what happened? I had no idea how to work the covenants. I had, I had no idea what the father, father wants for me. I was thinking that, oh, this is the Father's way to keep me humble and keep me meek. To keep me on the ground and to be a good Christian. To have nothing. Well, that's not what the scripture says. He says that the people are going to see that you are my people. Well, how can people see when I'm struggling paying my rent and that guy struggles paying his rent? I believe in the Father. He doesn't believe in anything. There is no difference here. I don't see the blessing. Why? I'm a son of God. He says in the scripture, I'm blessed by the Lord. And I don't see any difference on the ground. Because the devil put this poverty mentality on the body of Christ thinking, putting, making them think that this is the Lord's way. Well, let's go through some verses. We're going to start with Genesis. From uh, chapter 3, verse 17. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, you listen to her, and have uh, eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toiling uh, you shall eat of it, and all in all the days of your life, both thorns and thistlers, it shall bring forth for you. You shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread. Oh, that's a curse, big time. That's a curse, big time. He says, you work, and it's not going to work. You work, and you sow the seed. It's not going to produce a lot of fruit for you. <clears throat> Let's read from Proverbs 6. Starting from verse 6. And it says, Go to the end, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Which, having no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. How long will you slumber, O sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little falling of the hands to sleep. Verse 11. So shall your poverty come on you like a prowler and your need like an armed man. Oh, that's a curse. That's not a blessing. John 10.10. 10. The thief does not come except to steal and kill and to destroy. I have come, Jesus said, that they may have life and they and that they may have it more abundantly. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Poverty is a curse. Let's read more verses. Proverbs 10, 5. Oh, man. I forgot to skip here. <clears throat> 10, 10, 15, actually. Proverbs 10, 15. The rich man's wealth is a strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. Is not the blessing of the poor. is the destruction of the poor. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 from 15. But it shall come to pass 
if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to absorb, observe, observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. So let's see the curses. Cursed shall be, cur cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the country. Cursed shall you be your your basket be, and your uh, kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body, and the produce of your land, the the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Cursed shall you be when you come in, and cursed shall you be when you go out. Oh man, I've seen that over my life before, big time. I left a place to go into a small vacation. When I came back, everything was messed up. I had to rebuild everything from scratch. And I thought, oh man, I should be blessed. I was, oh, but this is, the, this is the Lord teaching me stuff. This is the Lord. No, the Lord doesn't teach you through. The Lord doesn't put the curse on you. The Lord wants you set free from the curse. Jesus died to destroy the curse. Poverty mindset is the devil's deception and the thinking that he, he put it on the body of Christ. Thousands, over thousands of years, actually. But it's not the Lord's way to keep you humble and meek. And Jesus died, as I said, to destroy the curse. Jesus is not using the curse to increase you. No, the curse, the poverty, this curse is not used to increase you. This one is stealing, killing, and destroying you. Now let's read. Some verses here, Galatians 3.13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. He destroyed the poverty. He took the poverty on, on him, himself on the cross to destroy it. 2 Corinthians 8. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that... Through he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty may be rich. He took, he took the poverty on himself to destroy it so you can be rich. He took the, 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 the curse and destroyed it so you can be rich. Let's read this. Deuteronomy 28, starting from verse 1. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I commend you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations on the earth. Oh, then you can see a difference at your workplace. They are going to see that you are extremely blessed. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. What's the voice of the Lord, your God, for you? That you are His Son. That you are blessed and you are not cursed. That Jesus died to destroy all the curse and bless you. That Jesus is your life right now. If you obey what He's saying about you and not the devil, these, all these come upon you. Verse 3, Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. 4, Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your uh, kneading bowl. Blessed shall, be, shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you on one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you and your storehouses. And in all to which you say your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. Just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, and walk in His ways, then all peoples of the earth shall see you, that you are called by the name of the Lord, that you are sons, that He is the Lord of lords. They will see that, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods, 
in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, in the produce of your ground, in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give you rain to the land and its seasons, and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. He will take you out of that thing of borrowing money all, all the time. He will destroy that for you. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Oh, brother, I'm always the last one. I'm always the one that does all the work here in this company. No, he wants you the head, not the tail. And you shall be above only and not the beneath, not, beneath, not be beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, the Father intended for us to be the head and not the tail. He wants us to be prosperous and not in lack. We are a source of blessing and not a demand of constant need. We are the source of blessing. A lot of people are going to be so blessed from us because the Lord in us is going to bless them. Not a constant need. Oh my gosh, the Lord can, can solve this. Can you solve this? Can you have mercy on me again? Please have mercy on me. No, that's a, a demand of constant need. No, you're going to be a blessing. You're going to bless a lot of people. You're going to bless your family and your city. Abundance left over for every good work. <clears throat> we, have the <clears throat> we have the prosperity mindset and not the poverty mentality. The poverty mentality is a lie of the devil. It's not a tool of the Lord. No way. It's a deception of the devil. That's why the Lord is destroying it today for you. Our Father wants us to be blessed abundantly and not live a needy life. Always need, 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 need. No, He wants us to be blessed and covered in everything. So the Father is training us to think like Him. We have His nature, we are His sons, and we are getting trained to think like our Father. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> Let's say that um, there was that guy who's uh, over the whole Coca-Cola deal, right? So Coca-Cola is everywhere in the world. Every, every country we travel, <laughs> we see Coca-Cola and some peanuts. I don't know what peanuts. I forgot. But we see that Coca-Cola everywhere. If you are the president of Coca-Cola and you have three kids, wouldn't you train your kids to think like you? From Since they are kids, you train them. You take them with you out. You train them how to put their toys away to clean the space where they played and then they grow a little bit more and they clean after themselves and then they uh, swipe and take care of them, clean places and then you take them out and you show them how to cut the grass and how to clean the driveway and then they grow a little bit more and they go to school they are being really faithful you want them to be really faithful with the homeworks you want them to do the homeworks to go home and take a nap and then be faithful and those little things, you train them from the beginning to be really faithful in little things. And they are proven that they are faithful. And they grow and grow and they are faithful in little things. Then they grow, they are 15, 14, 13. You take them to your, one of your um, places where you produce Coca-Cola in your city. And you take them and they work along with the workers. And they grow and they are being really faithful to do exactly what the other workers are doing. They're not different from the other ones. Actually, they are because they are your sons. But in that process, they are being trained to think very well and to be really faithful in that small, on those small things. And they grow more, and you put them over 10 workers. And they are being really faithful, and his team, and their team are the best teams in, the, in, in your factory. And then you put them over the section of the factory, and they are the best sections of the factory. They produce the more product. And then you put them over the whole factory. And he's being proven that he's faithful. And you put him over the whole city, over all the factories in your whole city. And he's proving that he's faithful. And you put him over the whole country. And then you give him a continent. Because you want, at the end, when you give him the business, for him to not destroy the business and not get destroyed by the business. Because he was faithful and little, he's going to be faithful with, those, with that much. That's how the Father thinks with us. It's not hard for him to give us whatever we ask in the same second. No, he can do everything he wants. But he's not doing it until we are proven faithful and the little. Why? Read this with me. <clears throat> Luke 16, 10. 
He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. But Lord, uh, but I'm, I've been praying for so many years. Now you know. He wants you faithful in least. So he can entrust you with more. Verse 11. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous manner, who will commit to you to your trust the true riches? 12. And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? What is the Father talking here about? What do you mean what's well, not my own? Because this money I worked for it, it's mine. No, actually it's not yours. It's just a training tool for you, actually. What he wants is a lot more. He wants you faithful in little, in the money realm. And then you're going to be faithfully much in the spiritual realm. We all want to rule and reign with him. And have absolute, uh, absolute authority over sicknesses, over diseases, over situations. We all want that. For our, our word, everything changes. But he's training us into that. He's training us into the, with the money deal. Be faithful in this little. Then I can entrust you with the real deal. So when you speak, that guy comes up. If you're not faithful in LA, who's going to entrust you with, with the legit things? <clears throat> the, we, we want like dominion over demons and living kingdom and angels. And, but if we're not faithful in the little, he's not going to do that. Nobody's going nobody's to trust us with that. He says this, that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Let's read the verse. Proverbs 23, 7. As for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you think poverty, you are living in poverty on the ground. If you think that you should be uh, just nobody and just be there in not having anything and barely have finding some food to eat, you're, you're going to live in that. If you think that you're going to be prosperous and you're a son of the living God, you're going to live in prosperity on the ground. The devil is very tricky. He tries to find a place in your mind to make you think like him. Then he can attack you in that, pl in that section. That's why we are renewing our, renewing our mind to think like the Father. The Father doesn't want us in poverty. He wants us in prosperity. Check this verse out. 26, Proverbs 26, 2. Like a fleeting sparrow, like a flying swallow... So a curse without cause shall not align. This is how it does, the, 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 the sparrow. This is how it jumps on the ground. And the other, the, the swallow, the flying is like, like that. What, what, what does it mean? Well, the devil wants to hit you every single corner. That's why the Father is training you to be faithful in the little so nothing can escape. So he doesn't leave any door open for the devil to hit you. That's why he's trying it. He's trying to put curse on you. He's trying to bring you to your mind that you should think like a poverty in this area. In this section, just think poverty. Think poverty. That's the Lord's way. And he, pre he, he gets you with that. Because the, what you think in your heart, so are you on the ground. But not anymore. You are being set free today and you are being delivered. You are thinking like your father. And you are extremely blessed, you'll see. We'll come back to you in a few moments.